We know your opinion, Cal. No need to scream. All of that's going to be nonsense you... because I'm going to have, you know, yeah, fair cut, enough, fair cut enough. out the loud screaming. Can you imagine if Cal just <laughs> screamed? Yeah, that'd be awful. <laughs> Especially for you. For sure. I want an inconspicuous animal and he's just like, ah! ah! <laughs> you absolutely did not want an inconspicuous animal. <laughs> My beautiful peacock panther can also just become a regular panther. Yeah, but won't. <laughs> he does sometimes. Once. Reluctantly. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Kyber Shards, a fifth edition actual play show set in the Eberron campaign world. Last time our party uh, poked around a little bit in the room that they found themselves in after the battle um, to near great detriment as Shade triggered a symbol of death trap. Uh, then they decided to throw a fireball hoping to burn and destroy whatever was in the sarcophagus that Kulsir and his party had opened. Uh, then retrieving Tyrus's head and Hallis's double scimitar, they retreated back up the passage, noticing along the way that some sort of divination magic had been following them around and discovering that Ari's mark has now supercharged his telepathy in a way that the whole world sounds like white noise. Uh, and it's really unpleasant when someone telepathies into his head. Reaching the surface, uh, they met Kadric, who had been left on a quest from Lady Kira Selshadra to tell them where to find her and escort them there. Uh, however, the party decided to go back to the school first and debrief with Thora, uh, which they did, and then decided to take a break uh, and rest a little bit uh, and change clothes. And um, that is where we left off with the party preparing to go see Lady Shalshadra and Shade very eager to go check in with Harazi. Uh, and that's where we left things, gang. Pug is just going to go and washcloth himself off and come right back down to the great room. That's it. Just make sure he's not bleeding anymore and he has everybody else's blood off of him and then right back down to figure out where he's going. Shade is standing at the door, tapping her paw. Uh, while you are standing there tapping your paw, Mrs. Brightdoom uh, walks over Shade and says, Shade, here, have a mm -hmm. sandwich. She offers you a sandwich. Thank you. I accept the sandwich. You're all right? No, I would like to leave like 10 minutes ago, but my friends decided they needed to shower and nap. I see. But I think that if I leave without them, then they'll be upset. And so. That is sometimes I'm a difficulty. Not. Would you like to sit and wait for them? I could get you something to no. drink. Um. Anything at all. No, I don't think sitting's going to make me less nervous or anxious to go. I think that it will be harder to sit still. Um, but thank you. All right. Uh, and she... Are you okay? I'm doing all right. I'm keeping busy. I have something to do. And it's useful. That helps. Good. 
I will not crowd you. Uh, and she um, steps back a little bit. Uh, and as she does, she just sort of surreptitiously drops a little slice of turkey on the ground next to Cal. Next to Cal. Uh, and, um, and then returns to her tasks. Uh, Pog went to, sh- to wa- just wipe himself off. Um, Ari went to change clothes. What about Esri? Uh, it was Esri's understanding that we did not have time for a thorough rest, so... Um, yeah, he too would simply uh, go become a little bit more presentable. Uh, stow the head in his room. Cool. That tracks. Gross. Cool. Uh, so if everyone's just changing clothes and washing, then it doesn't take too long before you all come back yeah. down to find the very impatient Shade eating a sandwich. Yeah. Pog is down. Where'd you get a sandwich? Minutes. Mrs. Brightdoom. <laughs> all right. So where are we going first, gang? Are we hitting up Razi or Selshadra? Shade uh, has a very strong vote. I know. And I'm, I'm inclined to not... Uh, I mean, listen, Selshadra uh, takes care of us in a uh, existential set sense, but uh, I like Harazi more, so I'm fine with going to Harazi first. Also, doesn't she probably already know since she stalked us with her magic ball? Yeah, I mean, she also knows that we're keeping I, her waiting then, but it's fine. I would, I would argue that uh, Harazi right. likes some of us and uh, maybe has reason to like us uh, regardless of what we do. Um, and so Shadra does not, and we were instructed specifically to go tell her uh, when we were done. All right, uh, vote. Do you want to vote on it? Pog turns and says, "Shade has mine." I'm, I'm with Shade Ezri. I think. Uh, so Chandra can wait. And also Harazi might be able to kick us back in time. Might be like we were gone five seconds. Who knows? <laughs> we can just we can just check on her. Like I obviously yeah. she likes us significantly. I just what if she's in danger? Because Kulsir is back. That's fair. Tell Thora. Tell Thora. Hey Thora. Yeah. Uh yes. We're, uh, Shade's really worried about Harazi, so we're gonna go check on them. Isn't Harazi, uh, between several and several thousand miles away? Yes, Mm -hmm. we have Mm -hmm. a fix for that. Do we have a way to get back? Does your thing work both ways? I don't know if you can hear him well, talking in the background. Um, he's not on this channel, obviously. I've only taken multiple care. people the one time in an extreme situation. So I, this is also a guess that it'll work. Um, and then usually she sends us back. <laughs> this doesn't sound... I don't want to... You know what? I'm. Oh, and Ari lets off the communicator. Is Thora still in her office? Mm-hmm. I'll be right back. And Ari walks through the library and pokes his head into Thor's office. I don't know who has Ezri's communicator if somebody does, so I don't want to share too many details uh, over that thing. Uh, Harazi gave Shade a piece of armor where she can teleport to Harazi once a week when she needs to. So that's the travel plan. And back? Harazi sent us back last time, so they have the capability. All right, I guess. It it's really important to Shade. Shade's freaking out about it, so I don't want to leave her hanging about it. Right. And also, when when I get back after this, we're, we're then going to go talk to Selshadra. Then after that, can we talk about this? Uh, we can. I don't know how much I can help with that, but we can. 
I just, I, I'm swimming blind. So any, any help is better than nothing. So cool. All right. Bye. And <laughs> he shuts the door behind him. Uh, Thor is caught up to speed on the plane, so. All right. Um, is the Kadri Rebel Warren gang still out yeah, I was like uh, <laughs> on the front steps? Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to walk up to them. I need I need you all to come in close. Come here. Get in. I know you're on a quest right now. But there is a very important second part of this quest that you did not get told about. I need you to make your way undetected to the market. I need you to find Salarka and tell her we've been taken to a second location, but we are okay. And we will return shortly. Where are you going? Though, for your safety, you cannot know. Tell her we're off to the lair. That's it. No, no more. No more. No questions. Go now. Also, tell her the fireball works. Good. That's it. Those things only. Go. Go now. Quickly. At, once Ari's done talking to Thor, he walks out the front door with an idea seeing the rebel warring game take off in the distance. They, uh, they take off running oh. uh, as they, as they go. Kadrick says, Ilya, Ilya, do the thing, do the thing. Uh, and Ilya, see Ilya's shoulders go up and she sighs. Uh, and then just darkness flows out from around her. <laughs> uh, and then a couple seconds later, you see Bajak lying on his face, having tripped. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then the darkness drops and Kadrick says, okay, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Let's go. Uh, Ari turns to Pog and is like, oh, good idea. You sent them ahead to tell Selshadra that we had to go check in on a friend and we'll be with him. That's why I was coming out here to tell him, right? You think I would send children to a storm lord's castle with a message that they didn't do what she asked them to do, Ari? They're kids. They... Use they, your mind. No. No. I sent them to be safe until we get back. Okay. And so I don't get in trouble with my girlfriend. There it is. Ah. So we can just leave from here. We don't have to leave some from Salerno's. Okay. I didn't do this last time, so you guys need to tell me how this works. I get uh, to go well, this time, right? Ezri, you need to climb up into Shade's arms. Or was right. no, I was holding it. Ez Ezri, here, I gotta pick you up. And Play then Shade dead. gets close to me. And Okay, we I, we gotta we gotta huddle and Shade okay. gets her arms touching everybody. She has no idea how to do this. She's and only Pog rests his hands more than down on everybody's person, shoulders. More than her, so. <laughs> you, you might need to squat more, Pog. Like bend at the Just bend at the hips. He's got a hand on Shade's head. <laughs> <laughs> what if you just got on your knees, Pog? That might be more helpful. Does that? I don't think any of y'all did that the last time. If we just get like a pyramid and stack to replicate the temple, what? What do you need to do, Shane? Maybe if you just did that, then we'll see. What? Let's all like put a hand on Shade. Um. Yeah, I just need to concentrate on my amulet on the stone, on the armor. So I'm, I'll do that. Pog still has his hand on your head. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> that means this was not on Philip's bingo card. Yeah, no, why would it be? Why would it ever be on Philip's bingo card? <laughs> do you mean, did I, I just want you to point make out that my that's... character was the only one that voted against this? I remember. Yeah, the DM reference. will remember this. <laughs> that has been noted. I'm sorry. It will continue. Will continue to be noted every time that it's true. I didn't add it. For it. <laughs> I've, added, I've added it to the to, to your spreadsheet. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> you Star focus. Favorite. And the um, I would give you inspiration, but you already have it. Uh, <laughs> shade focuses. Uh, the amulet um, glows warm in her hand. Uh, and then all of you are not outside the school. Um, you are instead uh, standing uh, amid the ruins of Shea Tiriast to lie. Just um, as we start to teleport, Ari verbalizes that. Like, what if Harazi's not there just as we disappear? <laughs> what? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> You have reached the temple of Harazi. It's <laughs> available to take your teleportation. Walk back. Uh, <laughs> um, the uh, the large building that Harazi dwells in slash travels through time in um, is sitting not quite where it was before. In, in, like, placement or time? Placement. <laughs> that was not there last time, right? Like, that was... Uh, Correct. Lead the way, Shade. Uh, Are we there? Or here? Because it's not the, it. the, the same. I'm here. And I run into the temple. Oh, we're running. running. Okay. Pog follows at speed. <clears throat> okay. As, uh, as, as we're we'll walking. Up. Yep. You go bounding into the temple, followed by your uh, your companions. Um, and as you come, come rushing in, uh, all of a sudden, uh, you hear a voice above you um, go... Hold it right there. Oh, hello, Shay. Hello. Uh, and you look up at Arj, uh, who's standing um, on the, the upper floor with a bow. <clears throat> hey, Arj. Is Harazi in? Is she here? Uh, yeah, she's here. Um, what can I do for you? She, or what can she that, do for you? She's I guess, okay? Is what you need. Yeah, um, everything's... Oh, I don't want her to do anything for me this time. I just want to make sure that she's safe because Kulsir came back and we saw him and then he and then he disappeared um, and I wanted to make sure she was okay. We need to work. Uh, I think we should tell people in an order, Shade. Um, this this should... He's back. But he <clears throat> did come back and then he did disappear. Yes, yeah. And that was yes. the order that it happened. Yep. Um, I'll, I'll go get her. Uh, and uh, Ari turns and um, runs off. Ari turns to Shade. There wasn't anything wrong with the content that you said at all, Shade. It's just sometimes news like that can hit people really hard. So having a, a bit more of a, a smoothness into how you deliver the information could just make it a little less jarring for people. I see. I actually, I don't, how do you gently let somebody know that their life is in danger? What does that um, so sound you like? Start with like, they're not here or it, like your life's not imminently in danger, but we did encounter Colsey. But it might I mean, be. Well, but like Colsey not like behind, like we're not <laughs> running in. We did, you did run in we and ran. say Colsey is yeah. back. So like to somebody that might be perceived as like, Colsier chasing you into the and tent. right behind us, yeah. Mm. But if he if he disappeared from the place that we left him, then he could just reappear in the place that we're now. Totally, I'm totally in agreement with you about that. Um, it, like I said, there was nothing wrong with what you said. Just there can be a bit more finesse to it. Um, but because you saw I just how think like Arj would have taken it better if it came from Harazi and not us. Harazi comes back into I thought the it room. was very succinct um, and to the point. Uh, and you you see Harazi appear on the the upper level and she 
begins walking down the one of the, the winding ramps. Um, is it, is what Aj says true? What did he say? <laughs> what you, you said. <laughs> Kulsir had returned. Yes. But you're not actively, he's not behind you? We encountered him earlier today. Uh. <laughs> I see good inspiration again. Um. <laughs> you encountered him today where? Under the city. It seemed like Stormy. he was always re- to a retrieving. sarcophagus. Yeah, retrieving his axe, it seemed like. <sighs> yes. I see. I that's all. I just wanted you to know. I you I you might be in danger and Yes. So Yes. Who stopped him last time? Um, he overreached. Uh, there was a terrible war. Uh, an invasion from beyond the plain. The giants of the Kulsia Dominion created a catastrophic device uh, and shattered one of the moons in order to unleash a magical spell that severed the realm of dreams from this world, making travel between here and Dalcor impossible. But in the course of the fighting, the Empire was terribly weakened, and the subject elves rose in rebellion And when Kulsir sought to harness the same power to turn it against the rebels, the dragons foresaw it and came and shattered the land. Um, Ah. the, The giants today seem to believe that this is the source of the many curses and strange magical effects on the continent. So, with Kulsir being back, giving your estimations, since you know of him better than probably anyone still living. Uh, What would your estimation be about what his goals are right now? Seems to have a small handful of followers, too fewer after our encounter with him. Um, But he doesn't have an empire. He'll be resuscitating himself. Uh, He'll have been weak when he woke and he'll need to gather power from well I I don't know where all he'll seek it but um, places where he's been buried um 
uh, magical places associated with his empire, perhaps. Sorry, can we take a step at places he's been buried? Yes. Kulsir... Within Kulsir's dominion, there was a realm of giants known as the Sulat League. The Sulat were mighty artificers and magicians. And one of the ways that Kulsir maintained power was that he had mastered arts that the Sulat League did not know anything of. Most of these were very strange and potent, and I don't know all about it, but they seemed to draw on the power of his marks. Um... But some of one of the cultures of the subject elves developed a ritual by which Kulsir could transfer his spirit into a new body when his grew too old or weak. And so, any time he aged too much, or was too badly injured, or, or became ill, or any other number of things, uh, he would take a new, on a new body. Mm. But this process weakened him, and required that he spend time recovering his strength it is the elves rebelled shortly after he had transferred into a new body after the war with Dalcor uh, and this is one of the reasons they were successful in any way let's see so yes there would be numerous tombs Would you happen to know where those are? Uh, no. All right. Would you know of where there might be record of that, or would it just be information that he solely has? If you could find... If you could speak with uh, the giants of that time, um, perhaps. But that would be most difficult. Uh, as far as I know, there are none living. There we might have be records. ways around that. There might be records somewhere. Um, but after... After my people fled from him, I came here and took refuge and played no role in the events of his empire. Fair and enough. And I, I do not know what became of him after the fall. All right. Um... Shade, any Thank you. other questions? So. Last time we spent the night here, we were gone for like a week, so we probably shouldn't do that again. Um, do you have a way to send us back? I can teleport you home, yes. <sighs> we appreciate it. I just, we just, we just wanted you to know. That, that was all. Thank you. Thank you for all your information. Uh, information was a bonus. Yeah. I mean, isn't isn't the important question here? Are you safe here? 
If he doesn't know where here is, then I am safe. How would he be I, able to find you? Could Have we potentially led him to you? He might. Depending on how long he's been awake, I worried that he might sense my use of time travel. Mm. Powerful magic like that would perhaps register with him I he could attempt to find me in all of the various magical ways if he had some way to follow you after his departure then I suppose it is possible that he could track you here I don't know but knowing that he is awake would give me time to prepare possibly relocate I actually zoned out a bit uh, uh, when y'all were talking before did we cover why um, he wants Kitsune because he was specific about wanting to capture Shade alive he'll be looking for me and he could use her somehow to find you she knows where I am. I suppose that was an obvious answer. Yes. Well, if there's anything we can do to assist you, I can't fathom what that would be. But if there is anything, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. I'm... Astonished that you all survived an encounter with him. He sat and watched. It was kind of a flex, I think. I see. Well. Well. Small mercies, then. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Ready to head back, Shade? What does he... What? Why does he want to find you? He has a... general desire to dominate those around him, but... <laughs> she looks around. This place is a very is a source of very potent magic. Mm -hmm. Were he able to take control of it, he could do <laughs> grievous harm. Oof. He can already do grievous harm. Wait, who's grievous? <laughs> it means very bad. Good job, Shade. That's a comp that's a comp complex word. I am learning a lot. Thank you. Yes, he can do a lot right now, but he does not have a vessel capable of manipulating time. Oh. He could move this without... Oh. Yeah, that would be real bad. Okay. I am so sorry if we put you in danger. Um, but thank you for your help. You didn't wake him up. Oh. That's true. I feel like some of the people that did have regrets, though. That may be true. All right. I am returning you to Stormreach. Um, yes, if you if you could, um, do we know what uh, do we know 
sell Chadra's address? Do yeah, Cadric Mark- told us. Market district. If that's possible. I'll do my best. Yeah. Og puts his hand back on top of Shade's head like that's part of it. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Harazi um, creates the teleport spell uh, and you all are um, suddenly uh, tripping and falling because you are being teleported back into the epicenter of earthquake destruction. Um, and there's not really a stable surface where Harazi, that Harazi knows of. Um, and so you, you come back in, uh, sliding down a pile of rubble. Ow. Mm. Just put on clean pants too. Great. (laughs) This is where, uh, you sent the kids to be safe. Yes, because they didn't get teleported here. No. Factual. They went to Salarka. They did not come here. Th- this is where. Never mind. Um, uh, all right. Uh, do we want to get the kids so that they can finish their quest, leading us to sell Shadra? Right. Or just dead straight there. Don't think anyone actually cares about that. They most certainly do. Well, we'll tell shoot. them it's forgiven. I'm sure they will take that well. Bless them with six quest completions. I don't think that's. You realize they're not dumb, right? Like they'll know what you're doing from where we are. Like, not sure that evidence suggests that you're correct about that. Okay. Uh, I mean, the marketplace is big, uh, so you don't see the blacksmith, but you are not far from it. It's just right there. We'll send them back and then then go. Okay. All right. Um, you are spotted well before uh, you reach Black Iron, uh, and you see Cadric and the other kids sprinting towards you across the um through the rubble. Uh. Oh, good. You're back. All right. Did you succeed in your quest? And Cadric looks at the rest of the strike force. What quest? Oh, my God. Good job. It wasn't a secret. Good job. Was it? I didn't tell any of y'all what I did. Oh. (laughs) Hog, what did you do? All right. Are you ready to be escorted to the Storm Lord? Lead yes. on. Awesome. Uh, looking over, I'm going to blow a kiss at the Salarka and turn and follow. Salarka is just laughing. Like she's just. <laughs> um Cadric takes the lead. Uh the rest of the Rebel Warren gang um fan out around you. Um and begin leading <laughs> you across the marketplace <laughs> towards uh, the large stately building that is the Lorsmark Palace, which is the where the Stormlords have their offices. Um, there's a cordon of Warforged standing at the foot of the steps, uh, headed up by Steeljack, the commander of the Iron Watch. Uh, and when they approach, uh, Steeljack looks at you all... <clears throat> What well, business brings you to the Stormlord's Palace? Uh, and then before you can speak, Cadric clears his throat very loudly. Um, and Stiljack looks down. He says, We're reporting on a quest to Lady Kiris Sel Shadra. <laughs> and Ari's I'll just over at Ari. Him. Like, Ari can't. What? Let him handle it. He's got this. <sighs> Steeljack looks up at the rest of you and seeing no help, Ari. looks down at Cadric. <laughs> Your name? Cadric, captain of the Rubble Warren gang. <sighs> I 
Let's go check it out. Uh, and another storm, another uh, Warforge um, uh, goes up the steps po- towards the door. Ari leans in towards Kadric and says, maybe you should also inform him who you're presenting for Lady Selshandra, just so she knows that we're here. Also, Ari, the strike force. Uh, our names would be nailed it. That's yep. perfect. You did great. That is your name. That's what you're called. Okay. Get yep. with it, Ari. That's my fault. Probably I never am, heard that term before. I'm going along with you. Don't come at me like that. I'm just trying to. Uh, a few minutes pass, and then the Warforged called Laith comes back uh, and walks over nice. to Steeljack. Um, remarkably enough, she says <laughs> to let them in. <laughs> Oh, Cadric's head just grew ten times that he day. Will like, be in <laughs> that's Captain Cadric to you, thank you. Captain Cadric, right. yes, thank you. Very well. Uh, and Steeljack uh, nods to the other couple of Warforged, and they they make a lane. Um, Before we go in, I will look. Is Donabella with us? Yeah. I'll look at her and go, Captain. Huh? I didn't know you had a. Leadership structure. Oh my god! And just Why do you walk in. So distracted. Well, say, always been the leader. Gang. <clears throat> well, Thank Kadric, you, now they've all heard of you. <laughs> yeah, they have. Ari, uh, Ari turns to Shade as we're walking in. And goes, I know they're kids, but it kind of feels cool to be escorted somewhere. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and not because we're in trouble. Yeah, like we're being presented. I mean, I. Like I said, you don't know that yet. yet. Um, you come into a grand foyer uh, and Kyrus Selshadra is standing just inside the door. Uh, he's, uh, you are here. It took you long enough. Uh, and she rummages in a purse uh, and Ari, takes out a oh. leather pouch uh, and holds it out to Kadric. And Cadric takes it, uh, and you hear the distinct clink of money um, in the pouch. She says, uh, well done. Uh, your quest is hereby uh, completed. Uh, she turns, where is Kolos? Um, Kolos comes out of her office. Where is the uh, scroll I had produced? Um, and Kolos uh pulls a, a piece of rolled up parchment out of his belt and uh, hands it amazing. to her. It says, here, this certifies completion of one quest on behalf <laughs> of the office of Stormlord Selshadra. I love this. That's amazing. Those are some powerful kids, man. Yeah, Pog's <laughs> going to give a fist bump to all of them as they walk. Uh, and um, Cadric just... Cadric is entirely speechless. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, uh, very good. Uh, you are dismissed. I will summon you should I have need of your services again. In the meantime, the rest of you uh, may come into the office. Thank you. Powerful people knowing your name is a great skill to survival. And a ton of trouble. <laughs> Probably the most and a big problem. Dangerous thing that survival could happen to you. Also, quest tax. No. What quest tax? You didn't you wouldn't have the quest. You That's wouldn't true. have completed it without us. Are you strong arming children for coin, Ezri? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, do the attention. thing. Uh, and then <laughs> darkness, darkness envelops the room. <laughs> <And> <laughs> And you hear Ari just watches them run by in darkness. No, you don't. You're, you're enveloped you in lives. a darkness spell. I I have devil sight. Oh, do you have devil sight? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, it's not really my thing, but one of you should figure out how we can do that. I are you are you actually joking? Pog. I have done it so many times. Not like, with us ever walking out of a room. 
disappearing. Okay. When we that leave here today, I'll do so it. So good. <laughs> Don't you make me a promise if you're not going to keep it, because all of a sudden, my hopes. I've done better multiple times. I just make the person not see us. Esri Esri can't see when the lights are kind of off, so I don't want to... The the disembodied voice of Selshadra speaks through the darkness. (sighs) Coming. And the darkness goes away. Oh. 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 And the kids are... <laughs> Go, no, they're gone. <laughs> Please come in and have a seat. Apologies for keeping you waiting. Uh, uh, Selshadra walks into the room uh, and goes around a gnome height desk uh, and sits down behind it. Um, there are chairs for each of you and a small, slightly raised platform with a cushion. Good job. <laughs> Pog curls up on that. Um. <laughs> Please have a seat. Of course. Um. Uh, there are four chairs in the room. None of them look alike. This is a, um, a choice. I like your designing it's eclectic things. It's an eclectic style. Ari takes a seat. Ari, this is the most comfortable chair you have ever sat in. Ari just does like the sink into it thing. Like, go ahead. If someone had taken a plaster mold of your body and designed a chair specifically to fit and support your body, they could not have done a better job. I know that's not why we're here, Lady Selshadra, but whoever your chairperson is, I would love their information because this is an amazing sitting experience. And that's a sentence I never thought I would say. (laughs) I'm not sure you Mm. should have. Yes. Very good. Sit down in a chair, Esri, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I will sit down in a chair. You sit in a chair that is a different size uh, and shape than Ari's. And it too is the most comfortable chair you have ever sat in. Uh, and perfectly supports your body. That's okay. <laughs> Pog sits down. Uh, same story. Um, <laughs> this is a larger chair. Also, you feel cool in this chair. It's kind of, you know, big carved yeah. wood number. You kind of imagine, like, if you were a barbarian king, this might be the kind of chair you would sit in. Can I keep this? Um, I suppose. Thank you. How, what? how are you going? How? Good chair. I imagine he'll carry it. I imagine you want our report on what happened. I do. The fourth chair is obviously designed to accommodate a tail, uh, and it is next to the slightly raised platform that Cal has already curled up on. Adorable. I would like your report on what happened. Uh, good news. We, well, we encountered an Onkeg nest and we took care of the Onkeg present uh, near the opening into the city. And uh, the eggs. Ong nearly eggs. died. That's true. This is all um, real. There were some traps down there. That's why it smells um, so bad. We also encountered Irving Finkel, who had been captured by the Onkeg, got him out of there and got him squared away. Ah, but he, Excellent. Yeah. He informed us that uh, he had spotted uh, Hallis Martain. Uh, he was in the nest when it happened, and so he was presumably deeper in. And then he also saw individuals that were headed deeper into uh, the fissure. Uh, further underground and we gave chase thinking that they may be responsible for the disaster in the city and we encountered them and had a fight with them uh the only real notable thing is that uh Hallis was with them not in a proximity but rather allegiance sense and uh Colseer, the giant emperor uh was also seemed to be their leader and they were responsible for the earthquake in the city. How do you know it was a millennia old giant emperor? He said so. 
he presented himself as such, and there were some telling marks, like having multiple dragon marks all over his body, being a giant, knowing the location of his own sarcophagus and wielding an axe that he had retrieved from it. Crazy, you know. super magical. Um, Interesting. Yeah. It looked like Colseer. Mm. It looked like the statue. That's fair. Only that more is... alive and a person. Interesting. Um, but he he and two of his followers uh, teleported away. Uh, the other two followers didn't make it. So I see. Well, that sounds close enough to success to uh, warrant your reward. Remind me uh, what we agreed upon in terms of payment. Yes, Ari, what did we agree upon in terms of, of payment? Well, he did. He just... Was I not in the room? Because we just... <clears throat> Oh, this. Got it. Hmm? What the. She, what, she didn't tell what us did, what she was going to pay us. What did we agree to? I don't have it written down. I don't know what you want from me. My notes don't have it in there. Or is this a test? We did. It, we, she I, didn't tell us what she was going to pay us. <clears throat> no. Somebody say something then. <laughs> like, <laughs> she didn't tell us what she was going to pay us. We argued about this when we were in the title. I don't know why you all are looking to Eric the player. I super load up love no, all this on the I wasn't. job. I was so, looking okay. at Ari, <laughs> who didn't. No, yeah, no, that was completely all in character. Okay, <laughs> the charismatic character who didn't bring up payment. We uh, argued about it. We didn't have a number. We would per you, favors. We like favors. That's a that's good payment. Um, um I prefer to deal in cash. Well, Open ended um, favors are um generally unwise and she gets it. dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pog is gonna lean really? over across his great throne and lean towards uh, Ari and say, could she get some of the people that you brought in out of our neighborhood without you having to do that? It's not really cash, but I can ask. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Unless yeah, you're going mean, to do it. I don't. Coin, coin is, is fine. We also, if you could offer some assistance. We've had the Swords of Karn move into our city district and are reticent to leave, and we could use some assistance in that dealing with that situation. But other than that, that sounds like a situation I am not interested in. How much coin did we agree upon? Six hundred. Yes, that was it. Uh, <laughs> And she, Each, right? That's what we said. Um, takes out a chest and uh, um, counts out 60 platinum pieces and sets them over on your side of the table. Now, I have your next assignment. Uh, and she flips through a page in her book. <clears throat> was that I didn't know that there was a part two. Um, this is not part two. It is an entirely separate assignment um which is have completed your first assignment and i have your second how many assignments are we supposed to assigning with you assigning us i well i don't know have you discussed with thora us taking on another assignment with you just she's our direct report, no i'm so. discussing it with you okay um what um <clears throat> What you thinking? Uh, Pog puts his hand on his communicator, not saying anything. Why would I tell you that? Uh, it's an uh, idiom. It's fine. What you will do uh, for this assignment is locate a storm lord. Oh, done. Uh, All right. <laughs> Jonas Wilkes is not yet accounted for. All right. He is the storm lord. Responsible for the harbor district. 
Yeah, we heard there was some trouble going on in the harbor. Yes, well, uh, part of the earthquake resulted in a substantial surge in the surf. And the harbor is not in good condition at the moment. Wilkes is a reprobate and fool, but um, he is nonetheless one of the Storm Lords. Furthermore, uh, his nearest available heir is a 16-year-old boy and thus not really eligible to take over his position. So it is, of course, you will understand, imperative that Wilkes be found alive and well and returned here. Because were he found in some other condition than alive and well, it would result in a vacancy on the Stormlord Council, which would create a situation of uncertainty, and uncertainty often allows uh, less powerful factions and entities to rise into the power vacuum, Uh, and as such, it is obviously extremely important that Wilkes be returned alive and well to occupy his current position and prevent any such vacuum that might allow a lesser known faction to rise in status. Understood. Insight check, please. Um, I I think I'm hearing something. Uh, (laughs) I'll use my inspiration. 19. I mean, you're definitely hearing something. The <laughs> trouble is Kira's cell shatter doesn't communicate in a very normal manner. Um, and so it's hard for you to be certain whether what you're hearing is what's intended. Um, well that, all right. Well, that sounded like where I started. <laughs> that was a really uh, long drive for a short trip. Uh, do you do you have like a an address of his residency in the Harbor District, like a place that we could go start our search? Yes, there is a Harbor Master's house uh, near the docks. Um. From what I am given to understand, the worst of the surge has receded, but there is still substantial flooding, so do be careful um, going. All right. Uh, But that might be a place to begin. Again, I cannot emphasize enough times the importance of preventing a power vacuum that would allow lesser factions to rise in prominence and this can only be achieved this which would result if it were to turn out that Jonas Wilkes was dead or permanently missing yep all right um yep uh loud and clear I appreciate your I do uh, hope so information uh we will uh, there, there isn't any. We can go tell uh, Thora about this assignment. Like, correct? There's no secrecy in terms of that. Pog has had his hand on his communications <laughs> device this entire time. I oh. Yes, but Thora. he said nothing, so no. she has no idea. Oh, I wasn't being sneaky. Should I All have right. been being? Agreed. Okay, bye, I'm Thora. glad that you do not think that was sneaky. Oh go. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Lady Selshadra. You uh, are terrible at negotiating jobs. Do you <laughs> all know that? Says the lady with one less chair. <laughs> yes, um, I just will I just look that at our chair as payment. No, no, no. Uh, oh, for the yes, last what? that's and the gold. You got gold in a chair. Um. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> In order, or in exchange for, uh, if not outright preventing the power vacuum, but at least providing closure to uh, Stormlord Wilkes's family, should the worst come to worst, um, 
I mean, yes, and that would of course be worse as it would open a power vacuum that would allow Indeed. lesser Understood. factions to rise in significance in the city. Every time Understood. you say things, I, just I have get a quick farther question. away from what they mean. Could up, information Shane? be something that we could be paid in? What information would you yeah, be what seeking? Information? What information's better than gold? I was just, it was just a, a, a question, a theoretical question. I have a great deal I, of information. Right. And we often have questions. Let us uh, posit, Lady Silasadra, that uh, Stormlord, it, Stormlord Wilkes is returned safely, as is your direct assignment. Uh, yes, that is, of course, the official position of this office, that that is the desirable outcome of this mission. Indeed. I get uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Ezra uh, just like wink, cash, wax, wax, uh, pog, like on the shoulder as hard as he can. Cash uh, for completion of that particular form of the job. Uh, would we say... 800 gold being a sufficient uh, level of compensation for such a job. She smiles. Yes. It seems that you would consider that a sufficient sum of money for rescuing a storm lord. I, I don't know how much we should be asking for. I'm she, poor. You all are we rich. We just got told we're bad <laughs> at it. So you went no, up a tiny bit. My net worth just increased 150 no, Which 1500%. is probably why you shouldn't be um, the one talking for this you part. All looked, I agree. You all looked at me and I asked me not. to talk. I just understood what we're supposed to Sorry. really do with the I imagine talking. that there are people who find this part of your group dynamic charming. Does <laughs> Apologies. No, there's literally nobody. We constantly do this to them, and they uh, are very kind. Stormlord, sell Shadra. Uh, what would you pay for your safe return? had you found yourself in a dire situation. I would not find myself in such a stupid situation as to be lost in a flood. Or a vacuum. But, Fair. True. I have arranged that the power vacuum that would result from my disappearance would be catastrophic on a scale that would make the recent inconveniences seem only that. I get it. If you if you're dead, we're already dead too. I know. Um, no, I've, I've if known. If I'm dead, you will like be that. dead very soon. That is the it, coolest thing you, anyone has ever said around me ever. I and would I just really look at how to do that. Scared. For a price, how about oh, six hundred each? See. Yes, I would likely reward someone who rescued, who saved my life with at least that amount. You could perhaps take that up with Lord Jonas Wilkes when you, and here we do pray to the sovereigns for his safe return and the Speaking prevention of, of a power, a power vacuum. Which would Speaking allow of that. Could we okay. negotiate so, a mentorship? Let's, I, I so, sorry. <laughs> um, you want to come work for me. No. I want to learn from you. That could be interesting. Let's say your fellow Stormlord is alive, but uh, perhaps... Why would we not say that? Everyone hopes fervently for yes, that of course. to be the case. But perhaps he was... He... He... Sorry? He, yes, was, Jonas. Was um, forced to take his operation far away. How far away would be too far to return to his duties? Hmm. If you were to, say, leave the city and disappear. Yes. <sighs> Just curious how far we should consider searching the world for him. Yes. How far out of town he would have to be saved. The... It would be important that... Well... If, for some strange reason, Wilkes were to 
across the Thunder Sea, he would most likely go to one of the five nations where his family has numerous connections that resulted in the inclusion of the Wilkes family on the Council of Stormlords in the first place when our agreement was initially made. So beyond the bounds of the five nations, I would not search for him. If that's pretty far, such a power vacuum were to occur. Tragically. Tragically. Obviously, none of us want this, but if it were to happen, do you know of any factions that are primed to fill such a slot within the city? Oh, well, numerous factions would certainly seek it. It would be necessary to convince all four stormlords of a course forward. Indeed. Any um, <clears throat> if hypothetically a faction were to desire to occupy such a vacuum. Which none should because of course no, we obviously desire not. no this is all power vacuum. I, I like thinking about these things. Uh, city politics uh, fascinates me. Um, in your estimation, what would a faction need to do to get themselves ahead of the pack? Well, a very good friendship with some of the storm lords would be Indeed. a good starting point. Fair enough. Is there any and forgive my ignorance for this, not super familiar with the inner workings of the Stormlords Council. Um, is there any kind of democratic process within the city or is it purely chosen by the Stormlords internally? <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were not making a joke. <laughs> He's pretty bad at them. Uh, no. All right. Democracy is a terrible idea. All right. Well, um, any other questions, gang? We should go rescue someone. Save on, him. On a different topic, obviously. A completely different topic. Um, could we be paid in support? <laughs> What and on earth would you need support for? Well, sometimes people don't like us. And so sometimes we just need support for people to like us more. Hmm. This sounds suspiciously like an open-ended favor. Which is something mm. only fools enter into. It's a terrible idea. She gets it. Um. Anyway, okay. uh, if... If this horrible situation were to come to fruition and we were to seek to fill the power vacuum, could we have your support in exchange for this job? I can't believe you would even bring up such a thing. Because I'm it was kind of if if myself. I don't understand. Absolutely. That's a. As if you hoped that such a thing might occur, that really be is rather beneath you, Mr. Smith. Indeed. I forgot your last name was Smith. Thanks. <laughs> Good friends. So uh, it wasn't it wasn't even accurate till recently. Eight hundred gold for the safe return or confirmation of tragic conclusion of Jonas Wilkes. Indeed. Thank you for your time. Once again, sorry to have kept you waiting. Yes. Where did you go? We went back to the school. We had to clean all the blood up. off of us. I see. When to look presentable. I ate a sandwich. She did eat a sandwich. I didn't get one, though. I'm definitely not super hungry. Well, I know a place we can stop on the way. I don't want to hear this from you right now. Can we I... at least leave her office before you all start bantering? 
look forward to the <laughs> successful completion and no doubt joyous reunion with my dear missing friend, practically a nephew to me, Jonas Wilkes. Indeed. All right, gang, let's uh, get to it. Thank you, Lady Selshadra. Pog does that awkward thing where you pick up a chair and put it with the seat on top of your head to go walking. As soon as Pog gets to the doorway of Selshadra's office, Ari casts darkness on the chair and then walks he past Pog. thumps, <laughs> thumps the leg straight into the door frame and bites it all the way to laying flat. You're welcome, buddy. And then just we grabs get out, it by the back of eight, the, the chair and walks out through the door, really? feeling his way. For that? For what? We're going to figure out where someone is. Do you realize what an average person makes in a year? Like, this is more than most people realize, make in a lifetime. Did you we have realize to kill what you're asking us to do? We're not going to kill anybody. Obviously. Well, then we have to please? kidnap, rescue him Can to we the other side of the world. get back to the school world. before we have this conversation, we everybody? Faction? We're just in the Storm Lord's <laughs> offices. It's super dark around here. Nobody knows who's talking. <laughs> when the Storm Lord asks you to you name your price, you name the biggest number you can think of. I All right, did next time do it. Then. for a seat. You're the on the council. At least my nope. chair is really Ezra, nice. You don't get to do that. You don't get to say, I'm the talky one, so talk. And then when I'm trying to negotiate things, interject with your quips every five seconds. That's not you how this is You did say, I'm really what? bad at negotiating, <laughs> and then negotiated. Speaking of negotiating, why did you tell her that it's a bad idea to make open-in deals when you just made open-in deals? Because... I the same way, you know how you came to me for advice with Salarka and I gave you sound advice that led to you being in a relationship, yet I am without anyone? <laughs> Sometimes life is like that, where you can give good advice to others but can't apply it to your own life. So, and now I want to go home. You should have at least asked for a chair. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> So you all depart and head back to the school. Meanwhile. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else is happening. <laughs> Far away beneath the jungles piece. of Zindric. Uh, <laughs> Dane and the children of Kyber burst in to uh, a factory, uh, to a warforged or some sort of automaton. Uh, factory. And as the theme to the 90s Saturday morning X-Men cartoon swells, uh, <laughs> they engage in -na 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 -na. a large-scale battle uh, against the um, automated inhabitants of this factory. Uh, uh, all right. Roll 3d4s. Let me know the highest number you get. Uh, four. Two of them, Ooh. if it matters. That's excellent. Um, describe for me uh, a, a way in which the initial engagement against the um, war machines uh, goes just ever so spectacularly well. Um, these, these beings are pr primarily made of metal, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, I suppose a good bit of lightning, uh, magic is involved, which would just propagate ever so nicely. Right. Um, awesome. Between them. Yes. hundred percent. Um, as they tear their way through the various, um, Warforged automaton, uh, the huge, uh, 20, 25 foot tall Warforged at one end, um, turns, uh, activates and begins to enter the combat with them. Uh, Casey, if you would roll 3d4, if you can. I obviously can't see whether your yes. hands are available. <laughs> <laughs> Strong word for it, but... I also rolled two fours. Awesome. I wish I would have uh, announced that I did that last episode. That's three of us in a <laughs> row, man. 
Yeah, you guys are doing way better for Dane's team than you did for the <laughs> Emerald Claw on their expedition into the jungle. Um, we have Ah, oh, nerds. No, bummer <laughs> that. Hey, I mean, that resulted in Hallis Martain being captured and put on a, put on a big weird slab in a strange I never liked him. Never liked so, him. Uh, it's fine. He's so likable. Okay. He's the most But did you like him world. better <laughs> recently? <laughs> this episode, he was great. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Um, the, uh, the huge automaton um, battles back and forth across the room against Dane uh, and Forge and their team um, before Dane uh, fists surging with power uh, smashes right through the chest cavity of the creature or of the of the the, the um, machine and brings it down. <clears throat> As a result of rolling uh, a four, the extra thing um, that results here uh, is not only uh, are they successful in just completely wrecking the place, uh, but Dane and his team. Um, get away with a substantial amount of information. Um, but the alarm has been raised, and so the team has to make a getaway. Uh, everyone's rolled, so I don't care. Eric, I guess, again, roll me 3d4. Three. Uh, three. Um, okay, so that's a simple success. Um, Dane and his team managed to fight their way out of the facility uh, and get away all of them remarkably enough um, yay baby so, uh, thank goodness yeah. Forge made it yes and that's where we'll wrap up for this week. Thank you all so much for watching. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can do so at links down below for all of our social media. If you'd like to see more or hear more of me and Eric playing RPGs, you can do so on the Geek Pantheon's Ever I'm Renewed podcast. If you'd like to see Colin playing video games, you can do so at twitch.tv slash sorry BTR. The O is a zero. New episodes of Kyber Shards drop every Monday. New Kyber Shards answers every Friday. And until next time, Thanks for rolling with us.